brought to you almost live from the dude in the basement studios. Why? Because that's where the good stuff is. It sips, suds, and smokes with your smoke and host, the good old boys. It's sipping time. Yes, it's sipping time again. Hello and welcome to this sips episode where everything good in life is worth discussing. As always, we are the best thing on at 2 a.m. This is a one hour show that's somewhat allegedly entertaining for almost 20 minutes. Well, 25 if you have low standards. Well, yeah, we are banned in five cities. 11 counties, six states, and we just heard that our TACA pre-check qualification application has been denied, so uh, we're back in the regular line, boys. Apparently, they looked into Harmeet's background, so... I always have to take my shoes off. Rejected. I, I've been there when you take your shoes off. They should let you leave those on. <laughs> <laughs> this is Made Man Bob, and joining me today are Made Man Brent. Hey, it's a pleasure to be here. I enjoy all the uh, robins outside. Robins? It's like spring in the air. <laughs> Well, it's, it's 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 coming on winter time in Florida. It's like yeah. spring in the air. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. We have we have we have winter here. It's about two days. You know when fall's coming because the color of the license plates on all the cars change. I, so, I wore a sweater one day last year. Ooh, I'm looking forward to two days this you year. You were sassy sweater. Yeah. You were. It was an indoor event, right? <laughs> of course, yeah, of course, always. of course. And made man Maury. Good morning, Bob. I'm so glad I brought my wellies today. I'm going to keep my toes dry in the basement. Well, it's always damp and fun here in the basement. <laughs> and good old boy, Harmeet. Thanks for having me back. All right. Oh, Brent. by the way, yep. uh, it is football season, so as they say in the vernacular, roll tide. Never heard him. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Brent, Brent Moy and myself are with the Bourbon Mafia. The Bourbon Mafia is a nonprofit organization composed of bourbon enthusiasts and industry professionals. With representation in eight states, our members combine a love of bourbon with a passion for charitable work. The group uses their love of our native spirit to raise money for local and national charities through rare bottle auctions and other themed events. And drinking. And drinking. And check us out on Facebook at The Bourbon Mafia. This episode is sponsored by Flaviar. Flaviar, it's an online whiskey club for spirits enthusiasts. Join the club and get your quarterly tasting boxes, free shipping on full-size bottles, invitations to tasting events, and exclusive access to rare and vintage editions. For more info, go to flaviar.com forward slash sips. That's F L A V I A R dot com forward slash sips. And our show is also sponsored in part by Fine Spirits of Cooper City, Florida, home of the Enomatic Machine, serving great wines, whiskeys, and other spirits by the glass. You can find them where? Uh, fine spirits dot net or Facebook dot com slash fine spirits, or as Bob says, forward slash, because no one knows how to use the internet, forward slash fine spirits. There you go. You know how to use the internet and all that weird Czechoslovakian. This we is why we failed the TSA thing. Yeah, okay, we, won't, we won't talk about the Czechoslovakian <laughs> pictures that you. Yeah, okay. Hey, what a what a what a guy in his. And no, no, I'm not even going there. Let that go there. <laughs> this is a family show. Our it's sip a family segments. show about whiskey. That's how you our, make families. <laughs> yes, that's, that's, family. that's how you make families. Yeah, whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> hey, is the Fort Lauderdale Whiskey Society falling off the favored list? Oh, yes. Yes, we have. They didn't pay up this time. We got to break some kneecaps. (laughs) (laughs) Our six segments are all about wine, distilled spirits, tea, and coffee. And today's show is an all Irish whiskey show. Woohoo! You got music for this, don't you? I mean, that's what I think when I hear Irish. It always sounds sad, and they're always drunk. No? That's just this one. Oh, this is what you think. Charms, the Syrian sweet no, that's Ireland and America. That's you. Yeah, I know. Stars, okay. Ooh, clovers. Okay. Clovers. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be featuring whiskeys from the Perno Ricard portfolio, and our samples today were graciously provided to us by Amanda Gadoletta from Perno Ricard. So thank you very much, Amanda. Thank you, Amanda. And here's the whiskeys we're going to be discussing today. We have Jameson Irish Whiskey. We have Jameson Cask Mates. We have Green Spot Irish Whiskey. We have Red Breast 12 and Red Breast 15. So why don't we have uh, Brent tell us about our sips ratings? 
I thought you were going to do it yeah, this time. Yeah, I thought you were going to do this. We all century. voted you to do it, Bob. Yeah, that's your best no. Irish accent. I'm still reading, so. Well, I guess I will uh, I'll do it. You wanted me to do it in my famous Irish accent? Oh, dear Lord. God. <laughs> People the, the drunken, world over. The drunken leprechaun is out and about. Oh, dear Lord. <laughs> uh, this is... We'll be tasting and discussing these whiskeys and rating them with their sips rating plus their signature sounds. Hey. Here are those signatures now. One sip... Give me a glass of water to wash out my mouth. I'm just trying to hold it in at this point. Well, we could have some lucky charms, though. Two sips. Nice, but what else do you have? Wow, well, isn't that nice? Three sips. Hmm, interesting. What was that again? Oh, God. Interesting. <laughs> it's, it's so sad. I'm sorry. I hate to see what he sounds like after he started oh, drinking. Four, oh, four sips. Oh. Let's keep this secret to ourselves. Pour me another. It's just. It's not fair for me That's to laugh. Possible. I can't do that either. This whole wires thing. Five sips. Oh, my. I was unaware anything could be this good. Oh, my goodness. Yes. 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 Yes! Uh, okay, it was better than the last ones we yeah, had. Yeah. <laughs> he did that on purpose. That's the thing. You know, that's that's there the should thing. Be like I meant to do that. Yeah, Pee Wee, he meant to do it that way. <laughs> we need to have a fanfare for him. I'm, he, I mean, Holy thank you for Lord. trying. I, I didn't have the courage to do okay, that. Okay, moving right along. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> what do you say, Micheline? I swear. Could you use a little water in your whiskey? Want to drink whiskey? I drink whiskey. And when I drink water, I drink water. Okay, so <laughs> so we're going to start out with uh, a you know a slight. Well, you might have actually heard of these guys somewhere on you know maybe in in an advertisement somewhere. It's a a, a, t- a tiny little brand out of Ireland called Jameson. So we're going to wow, have Maury. Yeah, nice. yeah. Good, They're good. Int- yeah. So we're gonna, mm-hmm. <laughs> we're going to have Maury tell us a little bit about them. Thank you, Bob. The story of Jameson's Irish whiskey begins oddly enough in Scotland. John Everything Jameson good starts in Scotland. John Jameson was a Scottish lawyer when he married his wife, Margaret oh, Hague. It, it went downhill right there. That's right. Her family was deeply involved in the whiskey business and owned the Hague distilleries. In 1780, another branch of Margaret's family built the Bow Street Distillery in Dublin. And in 1786, John and his family moved to Dublin and took over the management of the Bow Street Distillery from Margaret's uncle. English imperialism. That's why real Irish people don't drink Jameson's. They drink Bushmill. I don't know. Under, I, get, I get those people arguing in my store all the time. <laughs> under John's guidance, by the year 1800, Jameson's became the second largest producer in Ireland, producing a million mm-hmm. gallons of spirit annually. And by 1805... That's the amount that Brent drinks. Yeah. By 1805, it had become the world's number one whiskey, but troubling times for the Irish whiskey market were on the horizon. A combination of Irish temperance movement and the Irish War of Independence and the subsequent trade restrictions with Britain, followed up by advent of prohibition in the United States, created a perfect storm that severely damaged the Irish whiskey market. Oddly enough, the Irish independence movement nor the temperance movement took off. They're still drinking. (laughs) <laughs> and the Thank Brits are still God. there. Yeah. <laughs> and the Brits are still there. Can you imagine if they weren't drinking? That's Come right. on. <laughs> In 1966, John Jameson, John Powers, and Cork Distillers merged to create the Irish Distillers Group. And in 1976, the original Jameson's Distillery in Dublin was closed, and operations were all moved to the Irish Distiller Group's new Middleton Distillery near Cork. In 1988, Pernod Ricard acquired Irish distillers, including the Jameson's brand. Today, Jameson is the world's third largest single distillery whiskey, and the United States is its largest market. And they're owned by the French. Isn't that crazy? They're drinking French whiskey. Small world. Well, you know, what are you going to do? Actually, the old distillery is still open. They just don't distill there anymore. They turned it into like a... a Visitor center museum. Visitor center tourist extravaganza kind of thing. It's a little bit like the Bacardi factory. It's kind of like it's a small world. You get on a car and you ride around and you see like mock-ups and old stuff. Yeah, it's like Disney did it. But you can buy a t-shirt, right? You can buy a lot of t-shirts. There you go. If you That's get all a t- you need. Can I, if I can buy a t-shirt and a bottle of liquor, I'm I'm in. I'm in. That's yeah. an e-ticket ride as far as I'm concerned. There you go. <laughs> Jameson relies heavily on their terroir for their flavor. They use water from the nearby Dumgorny River 
and all their barley is sourced from within a 75 Man, mile radius right. of the distillery. I was impressed. Wow. I, I was <laughs> sitting here for the last five Where's minutes the applause, waiting for that. the applause button for that one. Oh, dear Thank Lord. You. Man. Hey, it's not my first rodeo. <laughs> Yeah, you you a rodeo cowboy, aren't you? I've been to Ireland. I'm going to call somebody. You're more a dumb like a rodeo exactly. clown. So, I, somebody's going to get called a dumb gorney. I've been to Ireland. My family came from Ireland. They were asked to leave. Yeah, that's right. As a result of some criminal matters yeah. involving liquor making. Yeah, a but, few American mutts say you came from but Ireland. But they came from there. So all right, the whiskey is made from a blend of triple distilled grain whiskey and triple distilled single pot still whiskey. Using a combination of malted and unmalted Irish barley, the grain whiskey is triple distilled in a column still. We want to send out a big thank you to Jameson Brand Ambassador Gary Feeney for his help with some of this information. So let's get started with our first whiskey from the Jameson Distillery. Uh, this is going to be the original Jameson's Irish whiskey, and I'm going to tell you about it. All right. Uh, this you whiskey. Tell all you want. I'm just going to drink it. You drink it. I'm going to drink it, too. 40% ABV, Irish whiskey is required by state law, or excuse me, by Irish law, to be at least three years old. While Jameson's original is a non-age dated whiskey, the component whiskeys are between four and seven years of age, and it is aged in a combination of ex-bourbon and ex-Oloroso sherry casks. Jameson's original is a blend of triple distilled pot still and grain whiskeys, and although it is not, although it is a non-age statement product, it is aged for a minimum of four years. Okay. Well, let's talk about the whiskey specifically. It's got a nice golden color on the nose. Interesting, typical Irish whiskey. Get some citrus notes, some honey, apples, pear, some malt. Um, definitely has some jamminess to the nose and, 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 a, and a lot of sweetness. And um, on the palate, it's viscous. It's mouth coating. There's vanilla, caramel, cocoa. Uh, it's got some grassy notes, a little bit of orange. And perhaps even a little bit of black tea. It's a very nice whiskey. And we'll be right back. Rolling clouds and crashing surf. Iridescent dunes reflecting by the light of a rising glowing moon. Seashore mesmerizing Night breeze hypnotizing We've come across these back roads none too soon Look to the left, to the right Keep your eyes on the road, my darling Wondering if we're only passing through Open roads and open windows. My hand is yours forever, sweet love. And we're back, and Maury was telling us all about Jameson. So uh, he tried getting it under the wire. He you tried to get it in you. before the commercial hit, but that <laughs> yeah. didn't happen. No, couldn't. So, do it. All, right, all right, thank you, Bob. Finish what you were saying. I was saying that uh, it's lovely on the palate. It's uh, classic Irish whiskey. It's the Irish whiskey that most of us uh, inter were introduced to first and uh, really learned about the category. It's the prototypical. Uh, the finish is short. Uh, doesn't really linger around for a long time. It's a beautiful whiskey uh, for entry level. And uh, there's lots of things that have kind of evolved from this whiskey, including some of the other expressions that we'll be talking about today. Uh, I think there's nothing wrong with this whiskey. I think there's uh, nothing but good to say about it. Um, it belongs in everybody's uh, collection. It makes a great Irish coffee. It's a great sipper. It's just an all-around great a good whiskey. Irish breakfast, too. You just pour it, it in a tall glass and you drink it and throw it the does. coffee out. Absolutely. I like a little side of bacon with my whiskey. You no, know, bacon is always good. For me, solid three sips. All right. Interesting. Now, Brent, what did you think? Well, the one thing that stood out with me with this, with the, uh, it's, a, it's a light color, but with the nose, I got fruit, fruit, fruit. A big, huge citrus nose to this one. And uh, did you get any... Clovers or stars or four leaf clovers and yellow moons. <laughs> <laughs> Always have to be lucky charms. I always said you're a bit fruity, Brent. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what I, that's what that's what I got off it, you know. But on the palate, you know, it's, it is a nice mouthfeel. You get that vanilla and the caramel. I got a little bit of the pine, a little bit of pine to it as well. Um, 
you know, pining the, like pining for the fjords. Pining, he's pining, pining for the fjords. Yeah, the uh, <laughs> yes, this is an um, ex parrot. So, and again, so uh, again, it, it followed the Norwegian palate followed blue. through Lovely with plumage. the yeah with the fruit as well. There was definitely a lot of fruit on the palate. So, and I agree, the short finish just wasn't long enough, but it was still a solid whiskey. It's not a. There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing offensive about it. And, and for the price, yeah. Right, for the price. Yeah, it's you, not, beat you know, it's, it, so. it can't be beat. I'm just going to give this uh, three sips. All right. Interesting. All right, Mr. Happy, what did you think? All right, kids. Um, the color is medium gold. I agree with what they said on uh, about the fruit on the nose. But uh, I, I did get a little bit of pine, but more on the nose than on the palate. It was like, like fresh pine needles, a little bit of a, a prickly nose to it. Those are the he knows about Pine prickly, didn't he? Cough you had today. <laughs> small, <Yeah>. small prickly. <laughs> oh, jeez. He knows about prickly. Uh, it's Harmeet missed a couple got, of got shows with us, so we're going to have some fun with him. So. <laughs> <laughs> You're a complete bastard, and we'll hate it. Oh, I know. This, this is why I avoid the show. Are you ever not going to fall for that? No, mm-hmm. he's not. <laughs> the you're, you're horrible people, and the whiskey's better than you. Well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, the, squeeze, a, squeeze Brent's head and you'll get some out of it. There's a there's a light vanilla coming out. I did get some cocoa and a lot of orange. I didn't get the black tea that Maury was talking about. And the finish was like sh- on the short side, but I got some more citrus and a little bit of white pepper on the finish. And I'm not bowing down to your corporate masters. I think it's a decent whiskey, but I don't think it's worth the three sips. It's a perfect mixer. And it's a great introduction for people coming into Irish or Scotch and just want to you know, come from something else. So I can only give it two sips. Well, isn't that nice? Oh, well, allow me to retort. Okay. Uh-huh. That's what's what your, I said. What's your retort, That's what buddy? I said, Jules. So, um, what you got? There's nothing wrong with this whiskey. This is this is a, a solid whiskey. And considering the amount of it that they make. There's too know, much grain in it for me. That's I think a hard that's my thing problem. to do. Yeah, it's, it's a yeah, lot of grain. Yeah, it's a lot of grain. But, you know, it's it. that's the style. So I try to just, you know, look past that and look at what it is. Um, and judge it for what it is and what's yeah. in your glass. Yeah. And, and you know, I, I, I absolutely, I, de- I definitely well, I get the citrus. I wouldn't pour it out. I get, I get the honey. I get some apples. Um, you get a. A little bit of a malty, grassy kind of note mm-hmm. on the nose. Um, on the palate, you get the vanilla and caramel. Um, I get, I'm not sure if it is a sort of a cocoa-y or a sort of a just just that sort of tannic from the black tea on the back end. Um, I don't get that black tea. I don't get that cocoa. I definitely get you know, like like orange peel. Yeah. And I get a, a just a, a touch of... I don't know if it's nutmeg or just cinnamon or just a combination, but um, hold on. You don't get white pepper on the finish. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I always ask when his mouth is full. It's it. You definitely get the pepper, and you definitely get sort of the baking spice. So it's sort of that yeah. hot pepper, but it's also that spice to it. Um, you know, it's a solid whiskey. I've been drinking this off and on as long as I can possibly remember. Um, yeah, I give it a solid three. Interesting. All right, so we're going to go to our next one from Jameson's, and I'm going to tell you about this one. This next one is Jameson's Castmates. It's a 40% ABV, again, a no-age statement. This was the brainchild of Dave Quinn, who is the head of whiskey science at Jameson's. It was created by taking the original Jameson's and then finishing it in Irish stout casks. And, in fact, the casks were first used for aging Jameson's. And what I was told by... uh, by Mr. Feeney, they were sharing a pint and said, hey, you know, it'd be kind of interesting if we finish some of our beer in your cast. Well, fine, I'll send some down. And then when they were done, he said, hey, how about you send them back? I'll put some whiskey back in them. And that's, and that's what they did. It's uh, a, a small brewer up the street, Franciscan Well, and they used it to age their imperial stout. Then they were drained and returned to Jameson's and refilled with whiskey and allowed to mature for an, another six months. And, uh, you know, I definitely... I definitely dig this one. It's uh, this is this is why you should drink with with people in the industry because you come up with nice ideas like this. Yeah, yeah, over a pint usually. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, this one really, this one really works well for me because you definitely pick up that stout note in it. It just gives it gives the Jameson's, which is you know, it's a lovely light whiskey, but it gives it that sort complexity. of complexity body to it. You know, it it really it's it's. I it, think I agree more body. 
This yeah. is this is this is a they're going the right direction here. Yeah, I'm picking up a little bit of green apple, but I I'm mostly caramel and like dark, dark toffee and burnt sugar on the nose, on the palate. I'm picking up butterscotch. I'm picking up dark cocoa, and you're, you're getting that roasted coffee note from from the stout on the finish. It's it's like having it's like having an Irish coffee without all that horrible coffee in it, wasting all your time with no liquor. <laughs> Yeah, why this one a, why ruin a good coffee with liquor in it? That's what I understand. Yeah, well, it's it, it's oh that that's yeah that's why lovely. A good liquor with coffee in it. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I think they're really onto something with this. I I hope that this remains a, a standard in their line because I will definitely come back to that one. Um, I got before. Nice. That's classified. All right, Maury, what'd you think? Well, Bob, you've stolen most of my thunder. So I only called on him because be, he was looking at his phone. <laughs> I'm going to be short and sweet with regard to the. Well, you're stout. short. I don't know about sweet. <laughs> you know, <laughs> at least I don't look like a troll, Bob. What's wrong with looking like a troll? You know, it's money I make. You have hair. Every time you yeah, go across I'm my bridge, jealous. you pay me. Sorry. That's Sorry. right. Guilty. Um, I think oh, it's a wonderful addition. I love stout. I love Irish stout. And uh, I agree. I think that the uh, it, it takes the original entry level Jameson and amps it up uh, several notches. It's much more complex. It's much smoother, much better mouthfeel. It's got some really interesting things going on, both on the nose. The finish extends out quite Excellent. a bit. Excellent. And uh, I give it a solid four sips. Okay. That's classified. Brent, what'd you think? I enjoyed this. Um, the uh, I got a little bit of a, a little bit of floral notes to it on the on the nose, and along with the fruit, the, the, it still carried through with me. But I could definitely get some of those the beer the hops notes in there as well that you could tell it came from a from a beer barrel. Um, with the uh, I, for the for the flavor, uh, it's lots of layers, lots of layers because you get the caramel, then you get the the beer flavor, then you get the cocoa flavor. Then I'd when be interested the trying, I'd be interested in trying the stout that came out of the barrels. Yeah, yeah. And then, I you love know, a good thick stout. And, and then you get the coffee on the finish, um, and you can, you see why people like to use this as, uh, you know, when they were making an Irish I, coffee. I didn't make a single joke about you liking a good thick stout. <laughs> In my head, though, they were there. Yeah. So it was it was very pleasant. It's not. You're a complete bastard. And we'll hate it. Yeah, it's not quite my cup. I, you know, while I enjoy it, it's not quite my cup of coffee. And um, well, but it's I not bourbon. Give it, it's well, not bourbon. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, but I still give it a. I still give it a three sips. I really enjoyed this. Still, nothing wrong with it. Nothing offensive. I want you to feel like you can tell me anything. Okay. <laughs> Get the leprechaun. Bring him here. Yeah. Like you killed him and juiced him. <laughs> this. This, right. this tastes like. Nice leprechaun. Mm-hmm. That's some nice leprechaun in there. Uh, so this good old boy, Harmeet. I'm going to jump ahead of Bob because he was looking at me. I, I'm going to say it. Uh, the color on this is a little bit. I was. I thought it would be deeper after six more months, and especially yeah. in a beer barrel, but the color is almost identical to the regular Jameson. I got those green apple notes you're talking about, but the, uh, the, the hops that uh, uh, the floral hops note that uh, Brent was talking about definitely stuck, came out to me. Uh, it's just a very pretty, but what really sticks out is exactly what Maury said. It's the mouthfeel. Yeah. It's richer. It's really pretty. Uh, yeah, it's thick. And, lay- and layers, butterscotch. Uh, I didn't get so much roasted coffee on this one, but more uh, um, chocolate, I yeah. guess. It's like, it, for me, it's borderline between, you know, where coffee mm-hmm. crosses into cocoa, sort of mocha yeah, yeah. in between. And, cocoa bean, I guess. Yeah. There you go. Um, I just... Uh, it's a huge leap above the the regular Jamesons. Uh, the finish is a little bit longer. The finish is smoother. Um, it's it's just it's more it's more balanced and it's got more of a just nuanced flavor. I, I definitely give this three sips. Interesting. Drop that bottle anywhere. Generous for you. Love you. <laughs> All right. Well, moving on, we're gonna have. Did you, did uh, you actually give a rating for this one? Hmm? Oh, yeah, 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 the first one. Yeah, that was the first one. I'm the one who read it. <laughs> wow. I thought I was cutting ahead of you in line. <laughs> I've, mm, got to, I've got to stop drinking yeah. at these things. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what hard meets, uh, you know what? I have people skills. <laughs> I am good at dealing with people. Can't you understand it? What the hell is wrong with you people? 
<laughs> okay, and on that, we're going to have Harmeet tell us about our next whiskey. So, <laughs> okay, people. <laughs> You've That's got right. people's cows. So what we have up uh, now is uh, one of my favorite Irish whiskeys. It's uh, Green Spot, although the particular expression that we're going to be tasting is uh, different. But before I go into the expression we're tasting, let's tell you a little bit about Green Spot Irish whiskey. Uh, Green Spot can trace its origins back to 1887 when William Mitchell and Son expanded their business to include the sale of wine and spirits. They purchased a bulk distillate from Jameson's, then aged it using sherry casks in their own aging cellars in Dublin. So basically they were a private bottler that made good, kids. They made good. The whiskey was aged for five years, and half, half of it was aged in Oloroso cask and half aged in Fino sherry casks before being blended together and aged for a further five years in neutral oak. Today, Green Spot's a non-age statement whiskey made for Mitchell and Sons by Irish distillers from a blend of single pot whiskeys, uh, single pot still whiskeys. And uh, then they're aged in a combination of ex-bourbon and sherry casks. So they're still buying the whiskey, and it's still coming from these Middleton people, which who make great whiskey. But this, it, as opposed to the Jameson line, which has the column distillate, this is all pot still. And the green spot name is derived from a former system whereby a spot of color was of paint was uh, used to mark the barrels. Uh, that was the paint hitting the barrel. There you go. There you go. It was the angels S- touching it. Splat. 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 Paint. The, uh, the different ages were marked with different colors. Over the years, the company has produced other expressions of the spot line. The blue spot was a 7-year-old. The yellow spot was a 12-year-old. The red spot was a 15 and originally, like I said, five-year-old for the green spot. And the clear spot was a 1,000. Yeah, yeah, that's the one we want. Yeah, the, the clear, clear was nice. The plaid was interesting, too. But uh, today, only green and yellow spot are produced. Uh, yellow spot recently became available in the U.S. about a year ago, maybe a year and a half. And uh, we want to thank Middleton Whiskey's national and brand ambassador, Jessamine McClellan. Is that right? Jessamine, Jessamine yeah. Jessamine McClellan. You've never met her? Oh, she's no. awesome. Yeah. Sweetheart. Uh, I've met a few people from uh, Pernod and, and from uh, Middleton, but not Jessamine. No, uh, you don't rank that high. <laughs> no, I know, I know. It's just nobody invites me to the good parties. It's because I'm brown. I'm I'm aggrieved. But, yeah, well. But they, they, they brought us good whiskey. So I I'll have let, people skills. I'll let my grievances go today. So the one we're tasting today is the Green Spot Irish Whiskey, which I've never had. It's the one special finish. It's finish, finished in Chateau Leoville Barton casks. Um, Which is a very nice wine. Beautiful. Lovely. Bordeaux. Uh, this is at uh, aged, uh, sorry, released at 46% ABV, non-age statement. It starts with the original uh, traditional green spot Irish whiskey, then finished in French oak cask previously, previously used previously used to the age of the Chateau Leo Barton from the St. Julian region in Bordeaux. The whiskey is allowed to sit in the cask between 12 and 24 months. And the interesting fact is the Chateau Leoville Barton's name comes partly from the Irish winemaker, Thomas Barton, and is still run by his descendants today. So we've got the French guys owning Irish whiskey and using uh, Bordeaux barrels in France owned by an Irish family. Yep. Yes. They get it back one way or the other. There you go. It's a pretty story. And it's a pretty whiskey. The color is a reddish gold, almost copper uh, on the note on the nose. Very malty, but the huge vanilla and honey and a little bit of banana. But then the berry from the Bordeaux comes through. I don't know what, what kind of berry it is, but it's, it's – someone said raspberry. I, I don't really get raspberry. Um, it's just maybe like more sour cherry or something, but it's, it's gorgeous. Uh, the palates, I got pears and apples and vanilla. There's, I'm just coming back to it and smelling. There's toffee, lots and lots of toffee. And I get some red currant, maybe some baking spice. And pardon me, mm. long, long finish and very sweet. It has a nice nutty, uh, nutty feel on the finish too. Um, I just love this whiskey. It's just definitely four sips. All right, Bob, you want to talk about this one? Yeah, let's let's see what Brent thinks about this one. You're still drinking, I see. Yeah, yeah. I always, well, I'm, I was I was drinking too, but yeah, I love yeah the color. It is a nice nice copper color. Um, the nose, again, this is inherent, I guess, with all the Irish whiskeys is a lot of fruit on the nose with these. And so I can see why, why, what it appeals to people when they drink this, they love that fruit nose, that fruit, fruit flavor and stuff that they get. 
Um, I didn't get any of the bananas, though. I got some of vanilla. I got definitely got some of that spice on the nose. Then on the palate, again, I didn't get any of the bananas. It's quite pungent. Yeah, but I got a lot, I, I did get a lot of fruit, vanilla, nuts. I got some raisins, some toffee, some citrus, a um, little bit of that baking spice. It's nice. Is that, is that hazelnut? What is that? I don't. I think I, it is hazelnut. Yeah, I wasn't sure. It's not like it's because it's not a not a nut that's like not like a common nut, you know that I have, you know. But it's not walnut or pecan. Yeah, right, like exactly. So what exactly. you're saying is you have a common a common nut. I have a common. <laughs> I have a common nut. When it comes okay. to nuts, yeah. takes one to know one. Yeah, exactly. you know. So um, <laughs> let's. Why don't we ask the expert on Brent, Brent, Brent wants to share his nuts. <laughs> we should have no, more. No, no, ask Brent's well, wife let me, about that. Let me get out the magnifying glass. How do you, yeah, yeah. How do you tell if they're common, Maury? I don't know. <laughs> let me get out the magnifying glass the and the tweezers. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, this does have a nice mouthfeel. It is flavorful. I, you know, I do like it. It's, it's very nice. So uh, something that, for me, it's not my cup of Irish coffee again. You know, it's not. I enjoy it. It's not bourbon. We get it. Oh, no, no, <laughs> yeah. no. But I, I mean, I still appreciate it. I still appreciate it. Yeah. It's just the the some of the things in there are not the things that I want to have all the time. But I'm going to give this a, a solid three sips. Interesting. Well, all me, right. That's pretty that, that's, good. That's actually. good for you. All right. Well, Maury, what do you think? I'm going to I'm going to echo what's been said by everybody else. I uh, love the coppery color. Echo what's uh, I get said. a lot of the uh, same things on the nose. Not so much fruit for me. For me, it was vanilla, honey, creme brulee. Um, I think it's got a nice coating mouthfeel. It's a very well-made whiskey. I'd love to compare it side by side with the uh, traditional regular green spot. Uh, i got to believe that the um, Bordeaux casks amp it up and give it a little more complexity. Also, um, also t- a year to two more years of aging as right. well. It's a beautifully made whiskey. Uh, it's got a nice long finish. Um, you know, that, that's a four sips. Hard to give it anything less. All right. Mm-hmm. I did, though. <laughs> that's classified. <laughs> You're a complete bastard. and we'll take it. Yeah. You're being shunned after the show. I know. <laughs> yes. That's okay. That's yes. okay. Um, you, 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 He's lucky we talked to him now. There's good good things coming, though. Yeah. (laughs) The best is yet to come. (laughs) Then we'll be back. Destination. But, baby, the whole elation riding down this lover's avenue. As slow as a willow blows, or as fast as the whirlwind grows, we glide the knee. Stars in cobalt blue Look to the left To the right Keep your eyes on the road My darling Wondering if we're only Passing through Open roads and open windows My hand is yours forever Sweet love Our eyes are here All right, we're back, and we are wrapping up our uh, discussion on the Green Spot Irish whiskey. Well, well, before we do that, you were telling us on the during the break about One Tan Hand, our production company, mm-hmm. but you won't tell us why. Because what? you were wanting to know what it means. I'm looking around the table. I'm thinking the only tan hand here is mine. <laughs> That's what <laughs> I thought. I asked but that But I've question. got two tan hands. Yeah. <laughs> and it was called that before you got in here, so uh. no. Um. Yeah, this is this is a lovely whiskey. I've had regular green spot before. This is my first time trying this one. Um, the nose is really, really nice. Definitely pick up the sort of the jammy, grapey, um the Bordeaux yeah. influence. Yeah, you're you're picking that up. I think that's why it's I'm I'm thinking I'm smelling berries. Um Fruit, definitely fruit, pick up fruit. citrus yeah. and banana. I mean it's it's just like Does anyone smell toast or am I having a stroke? Is it berries? Hold on. Yeah, you get berries. I get a lot of fruit. Just yeah. a ton of fruit on this, but not any bananas. Just a fruit. slight bit. Just a slight bit. I think there's, you know, in, underneath there's a slight cereal note, but, oh, it's lovely. And on the palate, definitely. Bananas and pears and apple and citrus. And um, I definitely pick up, I think it's hazelnuts. I, I re- really prefer scotch to Irish any day, but 
This I would put down a scotch for. This mm-hmm. is this is great. And uh, you get that 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 dried currant, dried raisin jamminess from 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 the wine. Um, yeah, absolutely lovely. I keep thinking, what did they do with the wine when they poured it out? Could I have it? I mean, if they're mm-hmm. dumping it just to put this in, could I? You it's know, Chateau Leo of a Barton. I don't think they're dumping the wine. I was hoping. I'm pretty you know. sure you're paying for that. Damn it, Beavis! What do you have to crush everything good in my mm-hmm. life? Um. Yeah, I mean it's a solid four sips. I you know, mm. I could drink That's this every day. Mm. Hey Siri, how do you say "bite me" in French? Ah, no yeah. Wi-Fi. There you go. There, see. <laughs> That's how you say you it. Go. That's how you say it. Hold on. Va te faire foutre. There you go. You you learned something today. <laughs> Who says this thing's not educational? All right. Did we're you know Siri could do that for you? <laughs> we're gonna, every time I ask her to translate something, she tells me no. no, no, um, no, no, no. We're going to move on to our next expression. We're going to have uh, Brent tell us a little about it. Thanks, Bob. Red Breast was the creation of W.A. W&A Gilby, a wine and spirit merchant in the late 19th century Dublin. Like many spirit merchants of the time, they purchased bulk distillate from various distilleries, including Jameson's, aging and selling the end product under their own labels. The first official mention of red breast dates back to 1912 when records at Gilby's first noted the sale of red breast. J.J. Liquor Whiskey, 12 years old. 1968 marked the end of an era when Irish distillers ceased the sale of bonded whiskey to independent merchants, with the sole exception being Gilby's red breast. Gilby's continued marketing red breast until 1985 when they ceased production and in 1986, the brand was sold to Irish distillers who relaunched it as a 12-year-old whiskey in 1991. An interesting fact about the Red Breast uses the highest amount of Oloroso sherry casks of any of the Irish whiskeys in the Pernod Ricard portfolio. So the other thing, uh, one other thing with the Red Breast is that the one interesting thing that most people that probably drink it already know is that the, the Robin is the Red Breast, and it's the the one bird that sings around through the whole, the dark Irish winters. And so that's how it's got its namesake. Kind of interesting, you know, but most people that drink it probably already know that. And, so. and back to the beginning of the show while you mentioned Robins. Yeah. I totally, I was looking at the box and I just went he, over my he head. You thought you were talking about Batman, the show. Oh, about Batman and Robin. Why is there a, why, like, why is there a bunch of Robins out here without Batman? Is yeah. Bert Ward going to be joining us? <laughs> yeah. yeah. This has a, this has a nice, nice copper color to it. It's uh, it's darker than you know most of the expressions that we've had today. It's uh, you know it's a beautiful color. You get a nice uh, nice nose to it. Got a little bit of uh, a little bit of uh, vanilla, some more of that nuts. But it's that it's an unmistakable nut. It's like a nuttiness that I, you know you just don't pick up on. I don't know what. Um, get some spice, citrus. You get a little bit of floral notes to it. Uh, it's it's there's an oiliness to this. this mm-hmm. nut. It's like, yeah, it's got some weight still, to it. Single pot yeah. still. Yeah, the uh, on the palate, I get it's very complex. I get a lot of fruit. To I get a lot of fruit on the palate. It's uh, oranges. Ah. I get vanilla. I get some spices. A little bit, a little bit more of that nuttiness. Gosh, and I just I can't. Name, I mean, I, it's tough to. Tough to pick out exactly what that not is. Not pistachio. It's not almond. Yeah, yeah, and it's mm. you know, not a little bit. Of, yeah, is it walnut? Of, not walnut. No, it's not. Yeah, good, walnut would be. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a little, maybe sort of a hazelnutty kind of. Yeah, I get a little bit of oak to this. Um, surprisingly, it's a nice, nice long finish. It just lingers on the palate. It's, it's very nice. Nothing offensive about this. Very easy drinker. If a bourbon. A, you know, a bourbon drinker would uh, definitely enjoy the red breast, um, especially this the twelve year expression. Say, especially the one to my left. Yeah, mm-hmm. the twelve year expression. This is this, this might convert some bourbon drinkers. Yeah, this is the twelve year old forty uh, percent ABV red breast. So uh, it's nothing offensive. To, very that, enjoyable. That's his highest praise, by the way, of mm-hmm. any Irish whiskey I've ever heard. Nothing of any whiskey and, that's any not Scott, bourbon. Yeah. yeah, nothing no. offensive. Yep. No, but I mean, you give know, it a number. Of, especially, I'm going to give it a number. Three sips. Thank All you. All right. Interesting. The nothing offensive number. The nothing <laughs> offensive number. That's okay. Right. Nothing offensive number. All right, Harm, what do you think? Well, I definitely was not offended by this whiskey. <laughs> Although, 
The more whiskey, the more of this whiskey I, I drink, I think I they keep thinking that Robin is calling me names. You weren't offended yeah. by it? Hold on. Let's see what the whiskey has to say. <laughs> You're a complete bastard and we'll hate it. I'm out too late. Can you, somebody hand me the bottle, please. Yeah. The, the Robin is looking at me. Um, Make sure you use the tan hand when you pour the, the, it. I'm always using the tan hand. Beautiful copper color. Rich nose. You can tell this is a pure malt. This, there's no, there's no uh, uh, grain whiskey. The lighter style whiskeys is the heavier nose. Lots of fruit, melon, vanilla, a little bit of citrus. Um, some floral notes in there. And there's a spice. I'm not quite sure what it is. Uh, when I added the water, more of the fruit came up. Uh, I'm pouring it now without water. Uh, the palate just... Mm. Could you use a little water in your whiskey? No. Stop it. Could you use a little water in your whiskey? No. I want to drink whiskey. I drink whiskey. And when I drink water, I drink water. You, we've discussed this. We'll go round and round about this. I will always add water just to taste to see if I can bring out any other flavors or, or, or you know, get some more complexity out of a whiskey, which you can. But so far, not on the table today, I don't think anything here needed water. And I don't really need to do it. but I don't I think it either did either. No. No. Especially the 80 proof stuff. No. But um, I just tasted just to help to see the heck what uh, would happen. But um, it's not like we don't have another full bottle right here. <laughs> it's fruity. It's beautiful. It's, it's so much uh, great, great mouthfeel to this stuff. And it's got a great long finish. It's kind of oily, uh, almost buttery. Uh, I think on the finish is some ginger or something. What is that spice? Mm. And that nuttiness. Yeah. It's, it's like to- it's it's toasted hazelnuts. Let's go there. And uh, it's just I just love it. And I will give it no less than four sips, my friends. No less. That's classified. All right. Well, Maury, what'd you think? Well, I beg to differ with both of you guys. Um, to me, this was the most uninspiring whiskey we've had today. Um, I thought it was not very complex. Uh, I agree that it had some oily. You're a complete bastard and we all hate it. I agree that it had some nice viscosity and some oiliness on the mouth. But for me, it was just it was just ordinary. I was expecting so much more. Um, I think all the whiskeys, I do want to say, uh, back to your comment about water. Hang on. Maury is a little bit broken inside. Yeah. Hang on. Yeah, hang on. <laughs> a little bit broken. <laughs> they all benefited. The spot in his chest where the soul used to reside is gone. They all Literally. benefited from some air. I found all of these whiskeys improved dramatically after being in the glass for 15 or 20 minutes. I, I pre-poured my whiskeys before the show. Right. Everything everything of mine sat. Well, I tried them initially, minutes. and I was much more impressed with air. That being said, I thought the Red Best 12 was, uh, I had high expectations. I found it to be uh, somewhat one-dimensional, not very complex. Uh, short finish, and what? Um, honestly, I just um, something broken in him. Yeah, then he poured <laughs> so, the wrong whiskey. Uh, I guess, yeah, right. I gave it two sips, and you guys thought I was bad. See that? Well, isn't that nice? He just wants to be the contrarian today. Yeah, that's what it is. He missed you when you were gone. <laughs> <laughs> I had things to do, man. I had things to do. I swear, there's something broken inside your soul. Mm-hmm. Um, Oh, it's got a lovely nose. Um, I definitely pick up the toffee, you know, citrus, and just a hint of honey and beeswax, and huge amount of fruit. I mean, it's just layered underneath. You have to you have to really give it time to open up to, for the fruit to pop out. But it's you know got a great nose on it. As far as drinking it, let's see. You know, I think maybe Maury's falling prey to what he always blames me for it, not ev- evaluating the whiskey for what it is. I'm looking at you right now, Maury, because I think we had this after the green spot, and the green spot was so much more complex, and that's what brought you down. Uh, well, then maybe you're, you may be correct. I try to evaluate what was in the glass, but there's no question that it was a letdown after the green spot. Yeah, it's hard It's hard to judge them when you're, you know, when you're doing each one of them. It's, you side try to judge, right? You want to try to judge each one individually, and it makes it difficult sometimes. I mean, the fruit you know, on this is Huge. Were you saying something, Bob, about the palate? You were drinking. It's it's it's. I mean, you you get that oiliness to it from the pot. Still, it's it's not quite Campbelltown oily, but it's it's. Oh it's, no, nowhere near. But it's 
so much more viscous. I mean, it's it's mouth coating. Uh, you get some spice, and you get that that hazelnut, and you get the citrus on it. It's lovely. Um, Red Breast has always been one of my favorites. I, I give it a solid four sips. And that being said, this being a four sip for me, and and the uh, Green Spot being a four sip, the the uh, Chateau Liva Barton finish. I still think that's a better four sip than this four sip. I mean, it's, it's hard. You only got four sips. You got five, you only have five sips to rate with. Yeah, so. and it depends on your palate that day. Yeah, you know what you're right. what you're really what you're really kind of angling for. The thing that you like that day may be different the day. Depends after if you're that. like Mister Miyagi and you had the same lunch every day for the last thirty years. Oh, Who yeah. was that guy? What's his name? Uh the guy from uh, Suntory. Yeah, every day. Yeah. It wasn't me, Yagi. It was something Japanese. That was right? the wax on, wax off yeah. guy. Yeah. <laughs> you, you got the memo, though. Yeah, yeah. I we mean, got the memo. Yeah, All right. Eating, eating the same thing every single day for the rest of your life. Good Lord. <laughs> well, until you retired. Only 50 yeah. years or something. <laughs> then 40 after, years. That, after that, he ate nothing the same every single day of the day he died. But. Yeah. You, don't right. to, you don't want to mess up your palate. Well, yeah. we're going to have Maury tell us about the next one if he can make it through. Thank so. you. Our next product is the Red Breast 15-year-old. It, too, is 40% ABV. Like the 12-year-old, this expression is also aged in ex-Oloroso sherry and ex-bourbon casks. Now, this is an altogether different whiskey. Um, yeah, three I, years. I thought it was drinking a different a dr- different whiskey, right? right. It's completely yeah. different, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, I know why. Because for you two, it's the extra... Six percent alcohol. That's all there is. <laughs> it's the extra. That's, it's that's the all same. you need. It's the same ABV. ABV. on the bottle. Watch. No, they're, they're both forty percent. It's the same yeah, ABV. Right? Are they but, really? Yes. Yeah. I thought those but, were forty. Uh, you know, honestly, a lot of times when we've done these, we'll say that the sixteen or the fifteen is the previous one on steroids or souped up, amped yeah. up. To me, this is completely different. It's, it is completely different. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. It's like it has much more bourbon influence, right? Oh, I'm going to get into that. <laughs> <laughs> the look in his eyes. I was scared. I was scared. Um, it's not your turn yet. He's still it's, talking. It's, <laughs> no, go ahead. Come Brad, more, go ahead, go. Brad. Tell me about the bourbon. No, 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 go ahead. no. Go ahead. Let, let him hold it in. Let him stew yeah. with this. He's gonna. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll sit here and stew and stew and. It's it's got a beautiful color. It's probably the oldest whiskey here. It's just got this lovely amber, coppery mahogany color to it. Um, you get lots of caramel spice and toffee on the nose. Again. It's got the same fruitiness that most of the other whiskeys have. Palette, it's luscious, it's thick, it's viscous, it's mouth coating. There's definitely malt, there's definitely caramel, there's citrus and orange and nutmeg and butterscotch. I mean, it's just got a lot going on. It's very complex. It's a beautifully made whiskey. It's got a very lengthy finish. Uh, it's, it's a wonderful whiskey. I gave it a solid four sips. Yeah. That's classified. You know, it's the one that he brought. It's the one that he liked better. Hmm. How mm-hmm. how long has that bottle been open? It's been open for quite a while. It doesn't even have the right cork in so it. It's, so it's got it's got some age on it too. Oh, he liked know, when it. He when you the open cork. a bottle for a while, the, the the air you know oxidation does matter, especially some of these. Uh, I mean, not years, but a couple years. No, I I gave a a bottle of uh, a Macallan nine months, and all that uh, that, sulfur. that sulfur went away. Off. No, I mean it was just sublime. But when it was brand new, it was like I burnt match heads. Mm. So I mean, oxidation matters. But wow, it's it's a pretty bottle. It's a pretty it bottle. A pretty bottle. Yeah. You want to touch it? I want to touch it. I can't yeah. believe it's. Can I touch it? I'm so, I just didn't yeah. believe you. It's only forty. All right, Brent. Yeah. What do you think? Well, I agree about the twelve year and the fifteen year. It's three three years mm. difference, and it's just supposed to be three years more of aging. But kids, this bottle says forty six, not forty. Okay, y'all lied. No, that's, that, that's why we no, love it no. more, and that's our, our producer. Our, that's our why we all love it more. Yes, but, this is a this but is on the, but with the nose on this, you get a lot of those bourbon notes, and so you get a lot of vanilla burb, uh, the vanilla, the caramel, the orange, a little bit of orange on it on the palate. All I'm going to say about this: this is like a bourbon drinker's Irish whiskey, or what I would like to say is the Irish interpretation of an American bourbon. And that's the way I would like to put it, because if you enjoy bourbon, you're you're going to like this. You're going to like this expression. You and, know, Brent, uh, we did a St. Patrick's Day dinner together, and you guys all brought bourbon. And for that very reason, I brought this bourbon, and you wouldn't even look at it. It was uh, I didn't I didn't have it, but I should have had it. You should have. You know, I should have had it. I well, very much enjoyed say? this one. How many sips? Four sips. You, Bob. Four sips from Brent. That's Four sips. It's a bourbon. Put this on your calendar, folks. Irish whiskey bourbon. It's an Irish bourbon. It's Irish luscious. Bourbon. It's thick. It's got a coating 
mouthfeel to it. Toffee and caramel and orange and nutmeg. Um, yeah, solid four. Woohoo! That's classified. Was it unanimous? Ah, love this stuff. All right, well, that's about all the time we have today. We hope you enjoyed this episode. You can catch all of our episodes online as well as on SoundCloud, TuneIn, Stitcher, YouTube, Google Play, PRX, and Spreaker, our native media host. iTunes, Google Play, and our own Android app are the easiest ways to enjoy the show on your phone. Just search for Sip Sud Smokes on iTunes or in the Google Play Store. Be sure to tap subscribe on the phone. On the show, the phone, the show will always be on your phone. We love your feedback, and you can reach us online at info at sipsudsandsmokes.com. Our daily tasting notes flow out on Twitter every day at sipsudsmokes, and our Facebook page is always buzzing with lots of news. You'll also be able to interact with thousands of other fans on those social media platforms. And you'll also get to see video of things you'll never taste because these bastards. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll, yes. We'll, do it. We'll, yes. We'll go on a trip and taste <laughs> stuff without the rest of us You're and put it, on video, put it on Facebook. Do us a favor and take the time to rate this episode. If you're listening to us online, that's a big help to us. And we get to see your feedback as well. I want to thank our co-hosts for joining us today. Thank you, Brent. Uh, You're welcome. I guess I understand the Robins. I don't understand the Batmans. (laughs) I'm Batman. (laughs) Thank you, Maury. Thank you, Bob. I'm so glad I brought my wellies today. My feet are toasty warm and dry. He's just odd, isn't he? He's, he's just odd. he's an odd bird. All right, thank uh, you, Robin? man with the tan hand. Bird? I'm I'm going to break this conceit of being in the basement. The sun is shining. It's a beautiful day in Florida. Come visit us. Thanks for having me. Yes, come to Florida. Bring bring your family. Leave your money and get out. Bring your whiskey. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, for sips, subs, and smokes, this is Made Man Bob. We thank you for joining us uh, for this lovely episode with some fine Irish whiskey. And remember, life is too short to drink bad whiskey. Yay, amen. No bad whiskey today. No bad. This has been a One Tan Hand production of Sip, Suds, and Smokes, a program devoted to the appreciation of some of the finer slices of life. From the dude in the basement studios, your host, the good old boys, will see you all next time. (laughs) 